After the end of World War II in 1945, the Soviet Union initiated a new generation naval anti-aircraft gun program. However, the performance of these designs, such as the ZIF-71 and other anti-aircraft guns, was not very impressive. They were only slightly better than the anti-aircraft guns before the war. Their response speed was too slow, and their fire control equipment was unable to handle long-range, high-speed targets. They were clearly unsuitable for the era of supersonic flight. In 1956, the Soviet TSKB-7 began developing a new generation of dual-purpose high-angle guns, which became known as the AK-725. The design of the AK-725 is very unique. It is the Soviet Navy's first unmanned, fully automatic turret. It has an unarmored rotating turret with a shell made of only 6 mm thick aluminum alloy. To prevent water vapor penetration and condensation, the shell can be fully enclosed. The interior and some of the exterior are covered with polyurethane foam insulation. The most peculiar feature is the shape of the turret, which looks like a conventional turret cut in half and attached to a hemispherical turret. The weapons of this turret are derived from the ZIF-74 57mm water-cooled anti-aircraft gun. Two of these guns are installed side by side in the turret. These guns have a barrel length of 4.275 meters and a recoil stroke of 30 to 37 centimeters. On the AK-725, each gun is supplied with a super long ammunition belt with a capacity of 550 rounds. Combined with the water-cooled structure, the firepower of the anti-aircraft gun is quite good. The theoretical rate of fire of the AK-725 is 200 rounds per minute, and it can sustain continuous firing of 100 rounds. It is impractical to store 1,100 rounds of 57mm ammunition inside the turret. Therefore, an ammunition supply mechanism is installed below the turret mounting seat. Usually, two ammunition handlers are assigned here. They are responsible for replenishing ammunition to the empty ammunition belt and collecting spent casings. However, their purpose is to ensure the continuity of ammunition supply. The initial loading of the gun and replenishment of ammunition to the belt are assisted by hydraulic mechanisms. The rotation and elevation of the turret are powered by hydraulic systems. The two guns are installed on the same welded frame, so they cannot be individually elevated. The entire turret can rotate at a speed of 35 degrees per second, and the guns can elevate from 12 degrees to plus 185 degrees. This gun can only fire one type of tracer high-explosive shell. The shell weighs 6.6 .6 kilograms and is 536 millimeters long. It has an initial muzzle velocity of 1020 meters per second. The theoretical maximum range for ground targets is about 12 kilometers, and the maximum engagement altitude for air combat is 5 kilometers. The tracer burns for about 10 seconds. It is equipped with an MGZ-57 impact fuse, which can briefly delay the detonation of the warhead after triggering, causing the explosion inside the target. One shell is enough to severely damage a typical aircraft. The shell also has a self-destruct fuse, which detonates the shell after it has flown about 7,000 meters. The AK-725 is operated remotely using the ESP-72 fire control system. There are no personnel inside the turret during combat. It is supported by an MP-103 BARS fire control radar. If this fire control system fails, the gunner can directly observe and control the turret's firing through a camera on the turret. There is a circular sight in front of the camera for aiming. The AK-725 entered service in the early 1960s and continued production until the 1980s. It was installed on surface warships such as the Moscow-class helicopter cruiser, the 1134 missile cruiser, and the 1171 amphibious assault ship. Some were exported to other countries. For example, the Parchim-class corvettes developed by East Germany were equipped with AK-725 at the stern. These corvettes were also exported to Indonesia.